So how do you feel about propagating plants? How do you feel about taking those scissors and chop, chop, chopping up that plant, hacking it into small little pieces? Anxious? Nervous? Maybe you've been procrastinating around a house for the last three weeks before doing it? I've been there. Because you usually either want to propagate an amazing, beautiful, luscious plant to make even more amazing, beautiful, luscious babies, or you want to cut up a plant that perhaps isn't doing so well and you kind of want to start it over a little bit. Either way, you really want your plant propagations to be successful, right? There's a lot depending on it. And the pressure is on, I can tell you. It is completely nerve wracking. And whether you're a beginner or whether you've been doing this for a little while, sometimes propagating can still be a little bit daunting. And that is exactly how I'm feeling today because I am chopping up the most expensive plant that I have, my amazing, beautiful Monstera Albo. But before that, I need the plant to cut up, so I'm gonna move us. You watch this little intro video and we'll be right back. So if you've seen my last couple of videos, I've talked a lot about the IKEA cabinet behind me, just about all the trials and tribulations I had, and all the while patiently, this lovely little baby plant here, which you can just see standing outside the IKEA cabinet, has been waiting patiently for me to fix her. And that's why I'm nervous, because I'm cutting up this beautiful beast, and she's expensive, and <laughs> I don't want to stuff it around anymore. I want to make her perfect and pretty and happy. Because I am going to try and fix her, that means I can actually do a little bit of trial and a little bit of test and error with a few of the different cuttings and I'm also going to try a little bit of a trick that I have discovered from a couple of growers of Monstera albos but you got to wait till the end to see that one because that is maybe a little bit of a hack. So come with me today let's cut this girl up and then let's talk a little bit about the care and then finally you can see what I've done with all the cuttings. So two things I'm going to do before I give this girl a chop is I've got to clean the leaves and then I also just have to make sure that I sterilize the scissors that I'm going to cut and because the stems are quite thick I have to use these things. <laughs> Okay, we'll let them dry. Let's clean some of the leaves. This is just some neem oil spray that I'm using. My one absolutely perfect leaf. Can you see that? I love variegation. Lots of green, lots of white. Probably a little bit too much white, but I don't care, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Okay, so to cut this baby up, I need to be strategic about where I do the cuttings. I wanna try and find the places where there's an aerial root coming out or where there's a leaf coming out, or in some cases, there's a node where there's both a leaf and an aerial root coming out. I also am taking note of all of the leaves. I know there's a couple of good ones I really wanna save, so I wanna make sure I cut them up correctly. So I just wanna get a bit of understanding of where I think I'm gonna chop up. But how lovely is this stem variegation? Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. Okay, let's cut the top off a bit, I think. So my perfect leaf is that one. So that comes down to that stem and just under it, there's no leaf. So I'm gonna cut right there. I don't wanna snip it, but I do, but I don't. I don't know what, <laughs> it's such a weird feeling. So that's where we're gonna cut first. <laughs> oh, it's taking me like 5,000 minutes to just cut the first one. Okay, here we go. Don't fall over plant, don't fall over. <laughs> oh. There we go. My first cutting. Now I'm gonna chop him up a little bit more, but there's the perfect leaf. Look at that leaf. Look at that baby. Okay, so this is where we can get strategic. So I can cut there, because there's a nice long gap as well, and there's a root below, and there's a root above the, the cutting place. So that gives me one cutting with some nice some nice roots. Probably should have cut it down a little bit lower now looking at that. Okay, no, you know what? That's gonna be an experiment. So I actually have a node with two roots. Look at that, two roots. <laughs> That'll be interesting. So now I've got one leaf there, which actually is a really beautiful leaf, except for the fact, again, that's the light burn, but everything else about the leaf is actually pretty nice. So I'm going to keep that one as a separate one. Keep all of those three roots on there, actually. Choppity, choppity. Oh, look at that. One leaf, three roots. So again, we can go down two. So that's a nice one where it's got a nice stem and two roots. So now I've got a node here, but no other thing except a leaf. But then I've got a node with only a root and no leaf. And then I've got a node with a root and a leaf because the root is going into the moss pole. Okay, and for my final magic trick, this is the tip. This is all we got to go. It's a bit of a mess. It's a bit uh, wonky, but Definitely needs to be chop it in property. That's a lot of cuttings. And I'll get the other ones. One, two, three. There we go. All of those. <laughs> 
Right, so now I need to wait for those edges to callus over before I put them into any potting medium because I don't want that to cause rot. So I've got to wait at least a couple of hours. And let's talk a little bit about what this Monstera Albo needs in terms of the environment, the temperature, etc., to give it a really good, healthy life. The trick with all plants is not just about taking care of the plant on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. The best thing that you can do for the plant is actually give it the right environment to thrive in. Think about where that plant has come from. Has it come from the rainforest or the jungle or the desert? Think of the environment and the weather that it's come from and try and emulate that as much as possible. So with the tips that I'm going to give you for the elbow, it kind of does pertain to all Monsteras really. The only difference will be the more white you have, the more light you need to provide. So I have had mine in an Ikea cabinet and the humidity has been fluctuating, but the perfect humidity I have found for an elbow is around 70% humidity in the air. I have had my IKEA cabinet up to 80 and it has survived quite nicely. Higher than 80 is too much for an elbow. The elbow comes from a rainforest, so it's used to a lot of humidity in the air and all monsteras climb up trees. That's what the aerial roots are for in nature. So therefore, not only is there a lot of humidity, but there's actually a nice good airflow as well. So when you are looking for the environment for the elbow, don't just have it in a very stagnant environment. If you've got it in an IKEA cabinet, again, a learning but also understanding where it's come from in the rainforest you need good humidity but also good airflow to keep the air circulating and not have the water sitting stagnant on the leaves especially no water sitting stagnant on the white part of an elbow leaf because then that can just go brown it's not nice it's usually pretty muggy when you walk through that rainforest so the ideal temperature for most monsteras and especially the elbow is anywhere between 23 to 30 degrees celsius so that's about if my calculations are correct that's about 70 to 80 75 to 85 fahrenheit so again a nice beautiful tropical kind of environment and then the final part the really important part about the environment is the soil mix all the leaves from the rainforest drop to the ground and so the ground in a rainforest is usually very chunky it's got a lot of old roots it's got a lot of old leaves it's got a lot of fungus and animals and bacteria and all sorts of things to try and help clean all of that stuff up so when you look at people who love their plants you'll find they create a very chunky soil so that's what you've got to do for your monstera elbow. Use nice, big, chunky pieces of things like orchid park, cocoa coir, a bit of pumice or perlite. Pumice is volcanic rock. You can substitute either. You can use a little bit of potting mix to keep the moisture involved, but also a lot of the orchid bark hold the moisture as well. But because it's chunky, the roots that go through all the soil are still able to get a whole lot of oxygen. And that's what's really important for any kind of plant root, to be honest. So I'm definitely going to repot the elbow into some new chunky kind of soil mix. So I'll make sure I share the potting mix that I use that I mix myself and I'll share all of the ingredients and the percentages in the comments below and you can try and find them as you wish. So I just want to take a break here and say that all of the ingredients and all of the accessories that you see in this video, I'll try and leave a comment below. I'll make sure there's an Australian link and a global link as well for those who are watching, depending on where you are in the world. If there's any more video ideas that you have and you'd like to see me create, please leave them in the comments below. And also if you have any extra Monstera tips or Monstera elbow tips for the plant community, I'd love to hear them. Please do leave them in the comments below and share it with this amazing plant community. So we've got our environment, we've got our temperature, we've got our humidity, we've got our chunky soil mix, we've got airflow. What about lighting? So when it comes to lighting, the more white you have on a leaf of any type really, the higher the amount of light you need to give it. The reason why is because the leaf itself on all plants creates its energy from getting light onto the green part of the leaves. The green part is where the photosynthesis happens and it creates the food for the plant. So the less green you have on a leaf, the less opportunity it has to grab that sunlight and create food. The white part of the leaf doesn't do anything. It's just nice and pretty for us onlookers. So have a little bit of a trial and error with your lighting. Give it good, strong, bright, indirect light. Just make sure it's not too bright all the time because if you're getting full white leaves, you may want to dim it down ever so slightly. All I would say is give it a bit of trial and error, but to keep your Monstera elbow variegated and nicely variegated, you do need to give it a good amount of lighting. So that's the environment that we've talked about. And then of course, on top of that, there's the care you give it. So for me, watering all depends on your plant. I wouldn't go by every 10 days or every 15 days. That doesn't work for me. I try and go by how light the pot is or more to the point when the water dries out about two thirds. I find that Monsteras don't necessarily need the whole pot to dry out. I think two thirds is really nice. They do like to be watered thoroughly when you water them and then let them dry out two thirds. The one thing I will say though is don't let your Monster sit in water as in you've got it in a potting mix and then it's sitting stagnant at the base with water. I do find that they don't like wet feet. That's what's called wet feet where the roots are just constantly sitting in stagnant water down the base. And the final thing about the plant care that you need to give it is the amount of fertilizer. Now again it depends 
depends on the potting mix or you've got Lekker or you've got a hydroponic solution. Honestly, just go almost by what the recommended dosage is on the instructions of the fertilizer that you use. And then every second watering, I will put a little bit of fertilizer and I'll put it lower. So let's say every liter needs five milliliters. I'll usually do every liter it needs three millimeters just to give it a little bit of less, but then that means I can do it a little bit more often because I like my leaves to get consistency in their food as well as their watering, etc. It's all about balance. And I want my plant to be happy and healthy. So yep, I'm gonna try and create the best environment and not leave it like I did with my IKEA cabinet. The cuttings should be dry now. Let's go figure out some scenarios on how I'm going to make them grow into big, beautiful, amazing elbow plants. Okay, so I had to wait a little bit more than a couple of hours just to make sure that the stems were dry on each edge. Uh, because they're so thick, it actually takes quite a long time for them to dry out a little bit. These are all the pieces that we have now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got ten cuttings, two stem cuttings, and still I've got the base leaf or the base just here, which I need to pop up. So what's that? 13. Lucky for some, <laughs> I've got 13 different cuttings. So let's pot some of them up and then let's have a look at the end and see where they've all ended up. And uh, I'll share that with you as well. Okay, we're on the home stretch now. All of my cuttings have been potted up into different substrates. So we've got four at the back that are in my original chunky aroid soil mix. I've got two here with sphagnum moss. I know sphagnum moss works quite well. So these are the ones with the shorter roots, including the very top of the cutting. I've got one at the back that's actually 50% lecker, 50% perlite. The perlite just fits into the gaps a little bit. I'm actually going to treat that with just regular fertilizer. I do use a special fertilizer for cuttings. I do also, of course, have one in lecker with water in the base. That is a hydroponic solution. So that's my liquor. And then I also have two different ones. I have one in perlite here. I know that perlite has worked for a Milana Chrysum I have, and I have him on a little bit of a heat pad. So just again, hydroponic solution with a bit of fertilizer. And then something new I haven't tried. It's only new to me, I guess. It's not new to everyone else. This is fluval, fluval stratum. So they use this in aquariums in the base. So plants can actually grow in the base. And I have already tried it on a couple of succulent cuttings and the roots grew very fast. So again, that's another thing I'm gonna try. So I've got lots of different scenarios to try here and I'm so excited about so many. I've got like up to 13 different plants that could be very successful. I'm actually so excited for that. And I'm going to make sure that I create the right environment for all of them in one way or other. But I did learn quite a lot from my IKEA cabinet experience and the things that did work, I'll try and emulate across all the cuttings. So if you've made it this far, you may remember right from the beginning, I did talk about a little bit of a plant hack. And that hack is, are you ready? It's a little bit different, drum roll. <laughs> Anybody else drum roll that way these days? It's powdered sugar, or we call it here icing sugar. Very, very fine sugar. And I've seen a few experts who look after Monstera Albo trial this with their propagation cuttings. And it kind of makes sense to me because I've talked about photosynthesis with the plants before. And if you've got a leaf that is very, very white and it doesn't have a lot of green, which means it can't create a lot of its own sugar and oxygen. That's what photosynthesis brings in the elements and creates sugar and oxygen. So the thinking is, and it kind of makes logical sense to me, that if I add a little bit of sugar refined find very, very small, simple sugar, not a lot. It'll help with the sugar going into the roots and creating more strength into the plant. Will that work or not? It will be seen, but I've heard it a few times now and it's just something interesting. This little pink tag is going to remind me to do that. And I'm going to give it a drink of all the other nutrients as well. I use silica, I use my fertilizer, but I'm also going to try a little bit of powdered sugar with this one. And in case you're wondering, it's about two tablespoons of powdered sugar to a gallon of water, which is about four, four and a half liters. So I'm gonna see if that actually makes a difference to my plants. It's gonna be so interesting. So thank you very much for taking it to the end with me. I hope some of this information was useful to you. Of course, there's more to this journey now. I've only just started the propagations. And so in the next six months, I'm going to be taking note and I want to bring you on this journey. So please do make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get some more updates on how these are going probably in the next three or six months. And if you haven't yet seen how all of this started with my IKEA cabinet, please watch this video up here. It's all about the trials and tribulations I had when I first started my IKEA cabinet. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have a great week full of leaves, love, and lots of laughter. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. See you later.